The Japanese government still won't allow many residents near the Fukushima plant back into areas of high radiation. Yet the Environment Ministry has started trial decontaminations in these no-go zones. Officials have designated parts of seven municipalities near the plant as unsuitable for living due to radiation over 50 millisieverts per year. The government has delayed major cleanup operations in these areas in fear of exposing people to radiation. However, ministry personnel have begun trials in five areas to find out how much can be removed. That work will continue until the end of the year. The ministry wants to determine cleanup costs. It will also study ways to control any radiation workers are exposed to. After these steps, officials say they can decide on how to decontaminate the zone. Operators of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have resumed the operation of a system used to filter radioactive materials from water. It says human error caused the suspension last week. Workers at Tokyo Electric Power Company on Monday resumed their test run of the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS. The system is designed to eliminate radioactive materials from the water that is accumulating at the plant. They suspended operations on Friday. They had just resumed it for the first time in a month and a half. The workers detected a reduction in the flow of contaminated water in a pipe that sends water to a storage tank. TEPCO officials said a loose rubber mat clogged the drain. They say workers forgot to remove it after inspecting the inside of the tank. They had used the mat under a ladder during the inspection. The plant's officials have been plagued with problems using the Alps. They found a water leak in June caused by corrosion. President Naomi Hirose apologized for the problems at a session of the Fukushima Prefectural Assembly. He said the firm will make wastewater decontamination its top priority. This is the second time that a TEPCO president has attended a session of the assembly since the nuclear accident at the plant in 2011. TEPCO is dealing with the situation and starting to take measures with determination to deploy all of our management resources. Hirose has also pledged that decommissioning the reactors at the plant will proceed without delay. We have announced that we will put aside another $10 billion for this purpose for the next 10 years. He stressed that he will ensure that no necessary measures are canceled or delayed just because the company wants to cut costs or streamline its business. Japan's nuclear regulator is coming under fire from a group of leading experts. They say the body charged with overseeing the aftermath of the accident in Fukushima is too bureaucratic. The Nuclear Regulation Authority fielded comments on Monday from six experts who are studying the crisis in Fukushima. They looked at the NRA's first year of operation. One of the experts is a lawyer who served on a diet panel that investigated the accident. The regulators are acting like bureaucrats. When something goes wrong, they summon TEPCO officials and demand explanations. People must doubt that the regulators are really getting the truth. Another expert said drafting rules and standards isn't enough to win public trust. He urged regulators to take a more proactive stance in dealing with the crisis. Others suppressed for reforms at the NRA Secretariat. It's staffed mostly by personnel from the previous regulator and another body which was under a government umbrella that promoted nuclear power. NRA Chief Shinichi Tanaka said he feels the organization has been given a mandate that's beyond its abilities, but he said NRA members will try their best.
Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant face another challenge. They say that contaminated rainwater has overflowed when they were pumping it into a temporary tank. An official from the Tokyo Electric Power Company says four tons of contaminated rainwater has seeped into the ground. A tropical storm in September created the excess. It has been contained by barriers that surround the storage tanks. TEPCO officials say the rainwater overflowed when workers were pumping it into temporary tanks. The officials say the radiation level of the water just after the storm was 160 becquerels per liter. This is five times higher than the government's safety limit for releasing water into the ocean. Workers are hurrying to analyze contamination levels in the immediate area. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has expressed concern about the way TEPCO has handled the contaminated the rainwater. The operator of the Monju prototype reactor says it has completed safety checks it had failed to perform. Monju is a fast breeder reactor located on the Sea of Japan coast. The Japan Atomic Energy Agency told nuclear regulators they had finished checking 14,000 pieces of equipment at Monju. The operator had been blamed for more than 12,000 missed safety checks. In May, regulators ordered the suspension of preparations to restart the reactor. Uh, the Japan Atomic Energy Agency later discovered that it had failed to check another 2,000 pieces of equipment. The Monju reactor uses plutonium extracted from spent nuclear fuel to generate power. It was turned on in 1994, but a sodium coolant leak in 1995 resulted in a suspension of operations for more than 14 years. The reactor was restarted in May 2010 and shut down once again in October of that year after a fuel exchange device fell into the reactor. Last week, the science ministry decided to continue running Monju for at least another six years. In Iwate Prefecture are sending shellfish to the market for the first time since the area's coastline was devastated by the tsunami disaster in 2011. Oyster growers working along the coast in Ofunato City have rebuilt processing plants and restored their oyster beds. Tanks that eliminate harmful bacteria with ultraviolet light have been replaced. This allows oysters to be delivered in the shell to be eaten raw. This year is a beginning. I want to increase the shipments next year as the business takes off. 450 boxes, each containing 20 to 40 oysters, were transported to the Tokyo area on Monday. Researchers on both sides of the Pacific are working to track the effects of Japan's nuclear accident on bluefin tuna. A team of American scientists at Stanford University reported last year they detected low levels of radioactive cesium in 33 of 50 bluefin caught off the coast of California. Team members said the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant was the source of the contamination. They made their conclusion based on levels of cesium-134, which has a half-life of about two years and only produced by nuclear reactors. The Japanese and U.S. researchers are trying to start a joint study to determine how the toxins got into the tuna. NHK World's Yoichiro Tatewa explains in Japan in depth. Professor Hideo Yamazaki of Kinki University has been studying marine creatures in the waters of Fukushima Prefecture. We estimated concentration levels to be so low they wouldn't be detectable in the U.S. But the fact they found contaminated fish off the coast of the U.S. really shocked us, even if the figures are extremely low. Yamazaki says the level of contamination doesn't pose a threat to human health. But he says he wants to share his data with the U.S. researchers to figure out how the tuna pick up the radioactive material. Yamazaki says it takes time for tuna to accumulate radioactive substances since they're at the top of the marine food chain. Tiny creatures such as plankton absorb radioactive substances first. Small fish then eat the plankton. And big fish, like tuna, eat the smaller ones. Recent studies show bluefin tuna spend their juvenile period in Japan's coastal waters. The fish then take one to four months to migrate across the Pacific to the U.S. West Coast. Yamazaki says he thinks he can figure out 
how and where the bluefin tuna accumulate radioactivity by studying fish on both sides of the ocean. He asked the U.S. researchers to collaborate with his team. Japan needs to work with people from different sides to gather and assess the same set of data. We need to provide the public with reliable information. Researchers at Stanford University in April sent 20 30-gram slices of tuna to Japan. But customs agents at Kansai International Airport stopped them. They said proper documentation was missing. Customs clearance is tough for bluefin tuna because of stock conservation requirements. They said a document that proves the samples are not from the Atlantic Ocean is needed to start import procedures. But the U.S. government does not issue such paperwork for research purposes. So the samples are still at the airport, frozen six months on. This is an urgent situation. We need customs officials to understand just how critical this is and facilitate the timely transportation of materials that need to be studied. Scientists in the U.S. and Japan are calling for international cooperation and flexibility so they can better study the effects of the nuclear accident. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. A Japanese government official later told NHK World a uh, request for the release of the samples by scientists is being considered. Contamination is also affecting exports. Japan's fisheries head wants South Korea to lift a ban on marine products from Fukushima and other prefectures. The South imposed the ban in response to leaks at the nuclear plant. The chief of the National Federation of Fisheries Cooperative Associations, Hiroshi Kishi, delivered a written request to the South Korean ambassador to uh, Japan's uh, Ibyong-gi uh, in Tokyo. It uh, noted that Japanese uh, marine products must meet radiation safety standards before they can be exported. The request says the ban is based on weak scientific evidence. Kishi said the government needs to understand the real situation. We want South Korea to lift the embargo as soon as possible. We will continue to request that they end it. Japanese officials say the South Korean ambassador said his government sees the leaks as a major accident and this has created fear in his country. Survivors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki still carry the scars 68 years later. Some people are suffering with illnesses they haven't had before. They're offering to help out researchers who are interested in what they're going through. Doctors at Hiroshima University Hospital are seeing something new. A rising number of patients with a rare disease caused by radiation. Chiemi Takeshima is one of them. She was four years old when the atom bomb hit her hometown of Hiroshima. Four months ago, a test revealed an abnormality in her blood. These are her blood cells. The purple spots are white blood cells that have become cancerous. Takeshima has myodysplastic syndrome, or MDS. It is known as the second leukemia. There is no cure. 
We believe this is because of atomic bomb radiation in Hiroshima. Last time I came here, I had no reason to cry. Who could expect something like this? Each year, Hiroshima University Hospital finds MDS in more than 10 bomb survivors. 68 years ago, atom bomb radiation pierced people's cells. It penetrated the genes that are blueprints for the body. It's believed the damaged genes after decades cause cancer. However, no large-scale genetic data has been available to help scientists understand. One reason is what happened to many bomb victims after the war. The radiation study centers set up by the U.S. in Hiroshima and Nagasaki were not for treatment. Bomb victims who hoped their suffering would be eased found their consultations were only for the collection of data. They started to feel like guinea pigs. It took decades for this resentment to pass. Takako Yoshida died of MDS five years ago, two years after her diagnosis. Before she passed away, she offered her genes for medical research. She also decided to speak publicly about her experience. The atomic bomb has been nesting in my body for 61 years. I was shocked when it came to the surface. The horror of nuclear weapons knows no end. To honor Yoshida, a group in Nagasaki launched a drive to collect genes from bomb victims. On this day, a researcher at Nagasaki University meets with a bomb survivor who is due to have surgery for colon cancer. I hope some of what is removed tomorrow can be used for research. I'm happy to help in any way. The next day, his genes were taken from his cancerous tissue and frozen. So far, around 400 bomb survivors have joined the program. The data brings scientists closer to grasping the genetic mutations common to atom bomb survivors. I believe this shows that the bomb victims understand our research and want us to find out more about radiation's harmful effect on the human body. Chiemi Takeshima is now donating her bone marrow cells for study. Like other bomb survivors, she is hoping this benefits others in the future.